So, today I'm going to do a demonstration on the use of dryer lint as tinder. And uh, I'm also going to do a couple of other um, demonstrations of things you can do in emergency situations to get yourself a fire uh, if you find yourself stuck in the backcountry. So here I have a piece, a small piece of dryer lint that my wife took out of the dryer for me. I'm just going to use a paper book match, a cheap piece of, a cheap piece of ignition. You guys can see it here. But I just wanted to do this to demonstrate, to demonstrate how easy it is to use dryer lint as tinder. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this uh, dryer lint has been treated with a slight coating of Vaseline, and in addition to that. Uh, in an emergency situations, you always want to have your tinder very close by, so as soon as this ignites, you can get it into your tinder. Let me just show you how simple this is to do. It's an old book of matches here. I'll just drop the... So here's the tinder. And there it goes. So I'm going to put this on the snow. You can see how it burns. And your fire has just started. Back up a bit. Your fire has just started. Now out of a small piece of dryer lint like that, you'll probably get 60 seconds of burn. Maybe, uh, maybe a minute and a half. But if you get that right into your tinder bundle, you can see how this will start your fire for you. Now when I use dryer lint, for tinder, I actually use a much larger piece than that because, you know, it's free. You can get it in clumps. Uh, firefighters can tell you how flammable uh, dryer lint can be because they're regularly having to put out home fires where people have not cleaned out their dryer vents. So you can see, if you look back down on it again, it's still burning. And imagine that in a tinder bundle and you can see, uh, you can see how well it will provide for you. So that's my first example of how something as inexpensive as dryer lint can help save you in an emergency situation. Now, for my second example, I'm going to use something that's used a lot more commonly than even dryer lint, and that's cotton balls. Many people in the backcountry will put uh, a light covering of Vaseline on cotton balls, and they will put it into a, you know, like a pill bottle or a sealed bottle and take it with them. And let me just give you, for the rest of the demonstration, just for the ease of it, I'm going to use a, a, uh, an igniter. But you saw how simple it was to use with a paper match. Now this is a fireball, uh, I'm sorry, a cotton ball, with just a, little bit of, um, with just a little bit of Vaseline on it. And there it goes. And now you have a fireball that's burning, a cotton ball that's burning. And again, imagine you would put that right into your, right at your tinder pile. And I found that with these cotton balls, with just a light covering of Vaseline, I have found that um, you can usually get about a two to three minute burn out of one cotton ball. And you could, if you had to, actually make a tinder pile out of cotton balls. But again, you can see how in an emergency situation that would give you a chance to, um, to get a fire started and keep you warm and keep you safe. Now, there's a couple of other things around this issue of starting fires that I think you might find interesting and you might not have thought of in the past. Simple corn chips. Corn strips, actually. You all have eaten these. You've seen these before. You can actually make a tinder pile out of these corn chips. And so let me show you how that would work. So for ease of operation, I'm just going to use my lighter. It's a little bit breezy out here today, so it's a little bit easier for me to do it this way. But there's the start of your tinder bundle. Get that, get that going. The chips will take. And you can use this method to, uh, it just went out because we've got some wind blowing, but you can use this method 
to ignite your tinder and you can also use it as tinder. Uh, any uh, of these uh, oil soaked foods like these corn chips or corn strips, uh, even potato chips I've heard, can actually be used as an ignition source. Let me try this one more time. Okay, there they go. So you can see this could also be used as a tinder bundle to get the rest of your uh, to get the rest of your fire going. There we go. And just dump these. And that takes care of that too. But here are just regular chips. Regular tortilla chips. Get up. Imagine that you might need to use this as a tinder pile to get the rest of your fire going. You can see how it's burning. And imagine that you've got a pile of chips now that are starting to that are starting to ignite for you. I'm going to light this one more time. Again, the reason I'm having problems here is because I've got a slight west wind blowing, but this will go. You can see how that's burning now. And in terms of using this as a, as a tinder pile, you can see how the other one's catching on now too. Let's put this down. That's hot. And there goes the second one. So you put four or five chips together. Let's assume that, for example, your tinder is, is wet and you need to try and come up with an emergency way to get your fire started. That's a good example of how they can be used. Now, let me give you one other example here. I burned my hand a little bit on that. Uh, on that uh, so it's kind of interesting. If you look down, you can see this thing's still burning well. That's only two chips. So you can see how good that could be both as an igniter as well as a tinder pile if you're in an emergency situation. But here's something you might find interesting. Let's assume you're in the back country and for some reason you need to um, get an ignition source into the fire a little bit more deeply. In that kind of an emergency situation, what you can do very simply is use a Q-tip. That would give you about a three inch extension you have to get it into the tinder pile fast. We'll give you a three inch extension. And, um, and uh, that will also help you ignite your tinder pile. By the way, corn chips are still burning down here. You can make a campfire out of a bag of corn chips. So it's about 24 hours since I recorded the videos uh, using the cotton balls and the, and the uh, corn chips. And I wanted to do a final demonstration for you this morning. So it has been rainy, snowy, it's cold, it's windy, and I wanted to put together an emergency fire scenario for you. But I'm going to add one additional ingredient to this, uh, to this fire. All over the world we have conifer forests, and conifer forests, pine trees, fir trees, spruce trees, they bleed sap particularly pine trees. And that sap is flammable. So what I put together is an emergency fire situation. And that fire is going to be made up of four cotton balls, which I've already demonstrated, that have a little coat of Vaseline on them, some uh, corn chips, four corn chips, and a piece of, uh, of, uh, of pine sap from the ponderosa pine in my front yard. 
I'm going to ignite them. I think you're going to be really surprised at the kind of fire it produces. And I'll give you a really good idea of some things you can do in an emergency situation. So I'm using a lighter that I carry in my backpack. And uh, you can see that little wad on the top is the piece of uh, pine sap that I collected. I'm going to light this up. You can see now that the pine sap is starting to catch fire. And um, the um, corn chips are also catching fire now too. And look at how look at how this flame is starting to progress, how the fire is starting to progress. And there's no wood on this fire. I mean, literally, this fire is just corn chips, cotton balls, and a piece of pine sap. You can see now how it's beginning to really, really burn. So we're getting some smoke out of this. But you can see, again, just how vigorous, vigorous this fire is burning. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with a continuous film. But I will pick this up from time to time just to show you how high this flame gets and how strong it burns. Now again, imagine you're in an emergency situation. At this point, you would have, uh, you would have put some of your wood in here to build a bigger fire. But you can see how as a foundation, this is really taking off. and giving you a great opportunity in an emergency situation or a survival situation. And again, this is just four corn chips, some sap, and four cotton balls. This is some great fire. This is the fire now at about three minutes. So this is the fire at about six minutes. You can st see that there's still a very good flame here, but you can also see it's starting to wane. But with this six minutes of that kind of flame, you can see how, even if your wood was a little bit damp, you can see how, using this formula, you can really get a decent fire in inclement weather. Again, it's pretty cold out here this morning, and it has been pretty windy. And so I'll close this particular demonstration out right now. We are now at about 15 minutes and you can still see that there's a nice flame burning. Uh, I don't, I think that what's burning now is just basically the pine tar or the uh, pine sap that I put in here. But, and I honestly don't know how much uh, longer it's going to burn. But I'm guessing I could probably get another three or four minutes at least out of this fire, if not longer. So, I hope you found this video fun, maybe a little bit informative. Uh, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Please consider hitting the like button. And uh, I'll see you on the trail.